Okay, so the way to do this problem is they want us to draw the molecular orbital, the correct molecular orbital diagram for the starting material. Well, let's try doing that. Let, let's try drawing uh, all the molecular orbitals in this case. Let's see if we can draw all the molecular orbitals and then we'll see if we can pick out the right one. all the orbitals or the di this diagram? Well, we need to start by drawing all the molecular orbitals. Oh, okay. Kind of like we did in one of our previous sessions for smaller molecules, where we drew all the different levels. Good. So first of all, we have to decide how many overlapping p orbitals there are. Well, here's the first sp2 carbon, and here's the last sp2 carbon. This over here is not sp2. So here's a p orbital, here's a p orbital, p, 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 and p. One, two, three, four, five, six overlapping p orbitals. Remember, conservation of orbitals says that if you have six overlapping p atomic orbitals, then you should be creating six pi molecular orbitals. So I'll make six levels. One, two, three, four. Five, six, and each of those is formed by the overlap of six p atomic orbitals. Okay, now we want to use the principle that all of the uh, levels should be either symmetric or anti-symmetric. Oh, yeah. And that we want to be, there to be an increasing number of 
vertical nodes. Zero vertical nodes, one vertical node, two vertical nodes, three, four, and here there's one, two, three, four, five vertical nodes, because there's five anti-bonding interactions. We can label this pi one, pi two, pi three. How should I label this? Star. Yeah, so this would be a conventional way to write that. Pi four with a star, pi five with a star, pi six with a star. Now, three of these are under the center line and three are above the center line. There's no levels that are right on the center line because we have an even number, so we're not going to have any non-bonding. Now, it looks like here's where we started to have some difficulty. Uh, so, and we talked about symmetric and anti-symmetric. This is symmetric. Here we're anti-symmetric around the center. Here we're symmetric again. Well, let's see here. I guess we could do it like this. This would give us an anti-symmetric with three nodes. Can we do it a different way? Yeah, I'm thinking there's another way yeah, like that's also two possible. Together and then yeah. That's what I do. Like this? Mm -hmm. And let's see, this would also give us three nodes, and it's also anti-symmetric. So I'm not really sure. I, I kind of have a feeling somehow that this is the right one. But um, I think you just have to memorize which one is the right one. Did your instructor ever do a six level thing in, in class? All right. Um, so uh, I'm not quite sure which of these is, is right yet. I think it's this one over here, but maybe we'll come back to that. All right, now how about this one uh, over here? Now we need one, two, three. So here we need four nodes. So you have to erase one of them. Really? I don't think so. I don't think you ever have to erase one unless you have an odd number of overlapping orbitals. Then you might erase the one in the middle. Or maybe you're right. Let's see. So, And then I want to have uh, four. Does this work? That would give us four vertical nodes, and it's symmetric the way an odd-numbered one is supposed to be. I think this is the only way that this would work, that would give us the four uh, vertical nodes here and be uh, symmetric. Okay, now we have to draw our pi electron diagram. Now, as usual, um, one thing to remember is we're only drawing the pi molecular orbitals. We're purposely leaving out all the sigma molecular orbitals. We don't care about sigma. We're just drawing pi. Now, how many pi electrons are in this reaction? Six. Yeah. We probably should have drawn the mechanism here to make clear that these are the electrons that are participating. Well, there's three arrows, which means six electrons participating. So here's our electron diagram. So this would be um, our normal electron diagram. Now this is what the electron diagram would look like for a thermal reaction. Remember that when we add heat, the heat doesn't really do anything interesting except help us get over the activation energy. We should assume for a thermal reaction that the electrons are in their ground state. But what does this light indicate to us? Pulls an electron in. An electron. The light is a photon, that's right. And then the electron is going to absorb a photon to go up to here. Why does that matter? Because that changes who the homo is. Now, for an electrocyclic reaction, should we focus on the homo, the lumo, or both? No, just the homo. Just the homo. There's only one, there's only one molecule here, and it's actually moving its electrons around. So where can it get the most accessible electrons? from its homo, when do we need to focus on both for the Diels-Alder reaction? In the Diels-Alder reaction, the nucleophilic diene uses its homo, and the electrophilic dienophile uses its lumo. But here we only have one molecule, so we should just memorize that we're using the homo. So it looks like we should be using our pi 4 level over here. All right, and this is good news because you have the answer to this question, right? Yeah, that's why I, yeah, that's the only, I know what we were confused about. We drew this thing right. wrong because we drew it as if it had, as if it was like four and two. So like ah. we made this like the lumo of one and then this the right. excited um, thing of the I four just, version. I just drew this one instead of this one. Like, you know, there's uh -huh. two possibilities. I drew this one instead of you this one. You might have made different mistakes then. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. So it looks like what you did. So what's the name of this reaction? What type of reaction is this? Electrocyclic. Electrocyclic. But it looks like you like you were um, treating it like a Diels alder. Yeah. All right. But this is an electrocyclic, not a Diels alder. Although theoretically, I guess we could kind of get a Diels alder here too. I suppose there's uh, maybe there's some way in which we could get a Diels alder here. What, what did the problem tell us? What reaction we were going to get? Uh, it can't be Diels alder. Well, it said it was a ring closure. And it can't be Diels alder because it's light not key. That's true. That it's light. And also, there's no activators. Yeah, there's, there's no electron withdrawers to activate one of these uh, to be the dienophile. Now, let's see. So, you have the answer here, and let's see which version they used. They used. They used is the answer in blue? Yeah, they used your version. They used your version. That's why I, I have, have two one. versions. But, uh, and it's the first, first one. one. Ah, one, two, first two, two, one. So, they put a node here, here, and here. So that's this one over here? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So it looks like we just better have to memorize this because both of these seem like they could be possible. 